Ali gets to his feet ever so slow for the 10th round. His left eye is all but closed. His right eye has narrowed. Oh, is taking a pound as Holmes now realizing that Ali can no longer hurt him. Are you all right? Are you all right? Dundee asking Ali. Dundee, who cares about the man? Together so long. Ali gets to his feet ever so slow. His left eye is all but closed. His right eye has narrowed. There was the right into the midsection. Home scoring at virtual will. Sad to witness this, isn't it? Angelo is telling the referee to stop it. Mundini is arguing with him. Check him out. What do you want to do? I'm the chief second. All right. I stopped the fight. He would not. He would not give in, Angelo Dundee. He cared about his fighter too much. The way Eddie Futch cared about Joe Frazier too much in 1975 in Manila to let him come out. When I get big, I'm going to get him for you. Get him for you. This is a story about redemption, a story about revenge, and a story about a young friend of Muhammad Ali who goes by the name of Michael Gerard Tyson, or as you may know him, Mike Tyson. A young boy who took it upon himself to avenge his idol, Muhammad Ali, aka, as you guys most commonly know him as Muhammad Ali in the English tone, aka Cassius Clay. When Muhammad Ali first fought his old sparring partner in Larry Holmes, he lost the famous sting of a bee he was once known for. You know how great I am. I don't have to tell you about my strategy. I tell let my trainer tell you, Bodini, come here. Bodini, tell him, what are we going to do? You're going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. Ah, that's what we're going to do. You heard it. That's my plan here. Muhammad Ali was not in his best state during and even before the fights, both mentally and physically. I would hope they would stop this fight. The unfortunate signs of his Parkinson's disease started to brew and was brewing and signs started to show up in his behaviours, in his face, in his body language and movement and many of his fans and media even noticed it. Muhammad Ali, who was born in 1942, Louisville, Kentucky, wanted to fight on despite this. In the blue corner, the challenger, the three-time heavyweight champion of the world, fighting... <laughs> showing his courageous nature and bravery. Even though Muhammad Ali was known for his great athleticism, sharp reflexes and great speed during his prime days, he lost most of that by the time he met Holmes of Larry inside the square circle. It was a highly emotional scene for boxing fans and the millions who watched around the world. Many fans still believed Ali could pull off the win. Ali himself thought he would pull off the win. I realize the legend that this man has been. I would hope they would stop this fight. Larry Holmes, aka the Eastern Assassin, born November 3rd in 1949 in Cuthbert, Georgia, USA, was known for having a very great jab, being very durable, and he was undefeated with a record of 35 and 0 when he fought Muhammad Ali. And don't forget, he also had 26 knockouts. So that's a 95% knockout ratio. He never lost before. He was coming into the ring with supreme confidence, 
And if you guys were watching, you if you ever boxed or had a fight before, you would know that if you're undefeated, you come into the ring with a different type of energy. Supreme confidence. And also, it must be noted that Larry Holmes was 31 years old during the fight. And Muhammad Ali was past his youthful days. He was past his prime. He was 38 years old. The fight took place in 1980 in Cesar's Palace, Nevada, USA. And the stakes on the line was the WBC Championship and the ring heavyweight titles. Very respected titles in boxing. Ali had a record of 56 and 3 with 37 knockouts. When the fight took place, he was aged 38 years old at this point, as I mentioned. You need to remember this key point that many forget. Ali was coming out of retirement in an attempt to become the first four-time world heavyweight champion in history. He was going for greatness. Ali, to his credit, came into the ring confident and brash as usual. But he soon realized when the fight started that he didn't have his old reflexes. He didn't have his old confidence. I think his body just didn't do what his mind wanted him to do. And I think that's what really frustrated Ali. During the fights, you can visibly see that Ali wasn't able to pull the trigger. He was gun shy. He was almost stunned and frozen and could barely even block punches or even he barely threw any punches throughout the whole fight. And me personally, Muhammad Ali inspired me to box myself. And when I saw this, I was honestly heartbroken. Chapter 2 In Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, there was a man who was born who you may be familiar with. He goes by the name of Michael Gerard Tyson. But you may know him as Mike Tyson. He was only a little boy when he watched his idol get brutally punished in the ring by the Eastern Assassin. Mike Tyson, who was born on the 30th of June 1966, was only 18 years old when he watched what happened to his all-time favourite fighter, Muhammad Ali. Tyson was actually quite upset and emotional about Muhammad Ali's loss to Larry Holmes. Tyson is quoted saying, how could Ali let a bum beat up on him? Michael Tyson looked up to Ali as a boxing legend and seeing him defeated was tough for him both mentally and physically. So Mike, being Mike and being heard on the mic, took it upon himself to seek revenge. We need to show you the fight between Mike Tyson and Trevor Burbick, as this illustrates the deeper part of this storyline. The story of Tyson versus Trevor Burbick took place on November 22nd, 1985 for the WBC Heavyweight Championship in Las Vegas, Hilton, Winchester. In contrast, Ali fought Trevor Burbick in 1981. Four years before Mike Tyson stepped in the ring with him, Trevor Burbick was 32 years of age when he fought Mike Tyson. Muhammad Ali fought Trevor December 11th, 1981 in what would be Ali's final fight. Burbick won the fight by unanimous decision of the 10 rounds. The bout, known as the drama in the Bahamas, was a difficult match for Ali, who was well past his prime and suffering from declining health. Despite flashes of his old skill, Ali was unable to keep up with the younger and stronger Burbick. This fight marked the end of Muhammad Ali's legendary boxing career. However, a young friend of Ali's saw this fight and didn't like what happened. It was November 22nd, 1986. The air was thick with anticipation. The boxing gods themselves were watching. The world's gaze was fixed on a young, ferocious 20-year-old Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson wasn't just fighting for a belt. He wasn't just fighting for glory. He was fighting far deeper. He was fighting for a legend, his idol and friend that he respected dearly, for Muhammad Ali. Five years earlier, had delivered the final blow to Ali's storied career, a defeat that left a bitter taste in the mouths of boxing fans everywhere. Ali, the man who had danced with greatness, had fallen to Burbick, his body no longer able to match the fire in his soul. And Tyson? Tyson adored Ali. He idolised him. Ali wasn't just a boxer, he was a beacon of hope, 
a man who defied odds and shattered barriers. So when Ali whispered to Tyson before the fight, get him for me, those words echoed through Tyson's very being. It wasn't just a request, it was a command from a king to his warrior. The bell rang and from the first it was clear this wasn't a fight, it was a reckoning. Tyson's fists blew with the force of destiny. Every punch was a reminder to Burbick that he was facing not just a man, but an unstoppable force. A storm with a singular purpose, vengeance for the fallen icon. In the second round, it happened. It happened. Tyson unleashed a barrage of punches so devastating that Burbick tried to rise again and again, but his legs betrayed him. The arena roared as Burbick stumbled, falling not once, but twice like a man trying to escape the wrath of the inevitable. And I just want to add on, the way that Tyson was delivering his blows, he was delivering with certainty, he was delivering with a promise, Tyson was in there delivering pain. And then, continuing, it was over. Burbick laid, defeated, the title stripped from his grasp, Tyson stood victorious, his fists raised high. But in that moment, it wasn't just his victory, it was Ali's. The boxing world knew Tyson had avenged the greatest. In one night, a 20 year old from Brooklyn made history and honoured his hero, standing as the new king of the heavyweight division. Tyson, aka Mike Tyson. Chapter 4 The Final Revenge Tyson of Mike stepped into the ring, hell bent on vengeance. When Muhammad Ali famously whispered something in Mike Tyson's ear before he stepped in to fight Larry Holmes. We can all guess what he said to him. Comment down below if you have an idea of what he said. Tyson started the fight quite fiercely, chasing Holmes all around the ring for the first few rounds, intimidating him and making Holmes just want to constantly keep on holding on for dear life. Michael Gerard Tyson brutally and savagely destroyed the Eastern Assassin, the King of Jabs, and sent him straight to the canvas, even early in the first round. Finally leaving him finished, officially ruled as a TKO in the fourth round following a brutal left hook on the face and cheekbone, cracking him with several combinations, body, head, head, body. Larry Holmes could not continue that round after round. Oh, a big right hand! It was a big right hand. Larry's nailed again. Down he goes. I don't know if he'll be able to continue. He should be hanging on. Now with the right hand, the left hand. He's going to hang on. But he'll stop the fight. Down he goes. Larry's hurt. It's all over. He is knocked out. And this is when everybody stormed into exuberance and excitement. Tyson was 20 years old at the time. Larry was 38 when this fight took place. Chapter 5. The aftermath. The aftermath of this beatdown when Muhammad Ali embraced Mike Tyson afterwards. Ali had a close relationship with both fighters, but before the fight, Ali told Tyson to get revenge for him. This was because Holmes had previously beaten Ali in 1980, as we just mentioned. In what turned out to be Ali's second to last fight, Tyson, who admired Ali, took this to heart, and after knocking out Holmes in the fourth round, Ali entered the ring and gave Tyson a hug, congratulating him. This was a significant moment, symbolizing a passing of the torch between two iconic heavyweights of two different eras. Chapter 6 Not only did Mike Tyson avenge his idol once, but he did it twice. Just imagine how Michael Tyson felt when he did this. I think the feeling must have been out of this world. And for me, as an average, as an avid boxing fan myself, and a fighter myself, this story has been a story of redemption, a story of friendship, a story of fulfilling a promise, a story of life, a story of downfills, and most importantly, a story of boxing, the sweet science that we all know and love. The sport I personally fell in love with at a very young age, which is why I'm making these boxing documentaries. I worked very hard on producing this documentary guys, which marks my third hashtag Tyson story short film on my channel as I embark on the quest to be the best boxing documentary channel on the tube of views. 
aka on YouTube. You guys loved the previous episode, man. Episode 2, which was the terrifying evil of Mike Tyson. Click on the top right of the screen to watch it here. And I just want to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, honestly, for the continued support. Every Friday, guys, you're going to see a new documentary for my Tyson story series. And let me know, comment down below what you guys want me to cover next. Should I do more Mike Tyson stories? Should I go to talk about other fighters? Let me know, man. And we are almost on 1,000 subscribers, wrote 1K subs, and the channel's almost monetized, man. So if you guys want to follow my personal boxing journey, I'm going to be having my second fight in December. Check out my Road to Pro series and join my Discord server and check, that, check out the Instagram for some extra training footage on my personal training. And all the links are down below in the description and in the pinned comments. If you guys got Twitch, I also go live on Twitch quite often, showing you guys my IRL sparring, my process into recording these documentaries as well. As well. And finally, I just want you all to know me. AWDG, aka Abdullah with the Clubs. I'm one of those YouTubers who reads and responds to every comment. If you made it this far, let me know, man. Comment Tyson Revenge down below so I know that you made it still this far and I know that you're still here. Also, let me know which country you guys are watching from. I love knowing what my, my viewers are posting in the comments. You know, sometimes I'll be walking home from the gym on the bus on my phone. I'm like, yo, this guy. He's coming from Germany, from Australia, from, from Japan, bro. You know, from the from United States, from South Carolina, from Las Vegas. Hundreds of hours into making these documentaries. I have to understand, like, I love boxing with a passion and I love making YouTube videos for you guys. Whenever I have a long day at work or coming home from the gym, sitting on the bus, nothing makes me happier than just checking my phone and seeing the notifications from you guys and the comments. If you guys ever see me not responding to a comment, I need you to call me out on it in the comment section below, man. And don't forget to join my Discord server for the best self-improvement boxing community. We have a lot of good vibes in my, in my server. So if you guys want to join the team, want to edit for me, if you guys want to be part of the YouTube brand, I'm also going to be releasing some merch very soon, my own boxing gloves, my own shirts. And yeah, let's see if we can reach 200 likes for this video, guys. And our previous record, which was like 70 likes. And as always, guys, don't forget to send this video to your uncle. But know your uncle here, only your uncle back home. Sometimes melodic